guys, welcome back to my channel. Or if you're new, hi, my name is Dana. I upload new videos at least once a week. Usually there's something tea related, but sometimes I like to change it up. And today is one of those days. I'm gonna show you how I like to make coffee at home. So I like to use a French press. I got this French press in Disney World. It actually came with some tea that I bought. It was like an Alice in Wonderland loose leaf tea and it came like inside the French press like in a little package. So you can use a French press to make tea as well, but since I have so many nice infusers, I don't. So this poor little French press sat on the shelf for a really long time, but I was determined like not to get rid of it. And then recently, like within the past year or so, I started to get into coffee and within probably the last like six months or so, I've started making coffee at home. So the French press is my preferred method. It is so easy and I like the size of my French press because it's perfect for just making one cup for me. I never really have use for like a whole pot of coffee. I try to drink like just a cup a day and not overdo it. When I'm at work, I work at a coffee shop. So when I'm at work, sometimes I'll get you know, like espresso drinks, I'll get like iced espresso. So when I'm at home, I like to do just a regular old cup of coffee a day and then call it a day after that and mostly stick with tea. Today, I'm gonna make this Starbucks Blonde Roast. It's their Veranda Blend. If you make your coffee in a French press, you want to have your beans ground coarsely. Um, so if you go into like a Starbucks and you're buying whole bean coffee and you would like them to grind it, you could just tell them I'd like it ground for French press or I'd like it ground coarsely and they'll be able to do that for you. I just got a coffee grinder for Christmas and I haven't had the opportunity to even use it yet. So this I had ground at a Starbucks. I like the blonde roast because it is like mellow. I love a good dark roast too, don't get me wrong, but I've been really enjoying the blonde lately. And you know what? I'll just read you guys a little bit of information like I do for tea because I think it might be kind of fun. Here's the story of Veranda Blend. It says, in Latin America, coffee farms are often run by families with their own homes on the same land where the coffee grows. We've sipped coffee with their farmers for decades, sitting on their verandas, overlooking the lush beauty of the coffee trees rolling out in the distance. Most times it was a lightly roasted coffee like this one. It took us more than 80 tries to get it right, mellow and flavorful with a nice softness. So that's the little story. And then the tasting notes are mellow and soft, subtle with delicate nuances of soft cocoa and lightly toasted nuts. And there's just basic information like um, grind beans for your brewing method and there's just like a little tiny chart there to kind of show you like how you would want it ground for different methods. So the blonde coffee is nice. I think like I'm starting to suspect that part of the reason I like it so much is because it has a light body like a tea has. The body of the coffee kind of refers to the mouthfeel. So coffees that have a lighter body are gonna feel in your mouth like more like a tea. And the way I was taught is kind of like, think of it as if you, if you can compare it to like milk, heavier body coffees will have more of the texture of like a whole milk. So it'll be like a little thicker, it'll feel heavier like on your tongue and in your mouth. And if, if it's a more light bodied coffee, it'll be closer to like non-fat milk. So it'll have that like thinner, um, more like, I, I don't want to say watery because I used to only drink dark roast because I assumed that a blonde coffee would be, or like a lighter roast would taste like weak and like acidic and weird, but it definitely doesn't. It still has those like beautiful cocoa notes and it's, it's like nice and mellow and soft. Before you put in your coffee, you want to take out the mesh part. So it has like mesh on the bottom and then the the lid you can kind of like pull it through and it'll like sit flat against the walls of the french press so we're going to take this out for now and put it off to the side and then we're going to scoop our coffee i like to use this spoon if you know my channel you know what this spoon is <laughs> yeah you could even see like a difference in color um from a blonde roast coffee to a dark roast it's pretty like visibly obvious which is super cool but it is equivalent to two and a half teaspoons 
It's the David's Tea Perfect Spoon, so it's meant for tea, but I like to use it for coffee. If you like it a little stronger, you can use a little more. If you like it a little less strong, you can use a little less. But I mean, I'd say probably about a tablespoon is a good place to start, like give or take. So I just put my coffee beans right in the bottom of the glass container of the French press. And then I actually like to add my sweeteners now. I don't like to add it like once it's in the cup because I like when it's all like brewed together and the sweetener will be combined all the way through the coffee and it'll really have time to dissolve. You can add it in later if you want, if you like to kind of do a taste test and add it as you go. But for me, I know how much I want, so I just put it right in the bottom of the French press with my coffee grounds. I like to have just one little pack of stevia with my coffee and I actually like this is crazy but I have three different kinds of stevia at my apartment right now. This one um, is called Truvia and it is just from the stevia leaf. This is the one I buy. So this is the one I like always have in the house. But then my mom bought these. They're stevia in the raw and the white one is organic. Yeah, the white one is organic and the green one is just regular. I expected these to be very like coarse, like the sugar in the raw, where it's like big, like chunky granules, but it's really not, it doesn't really taste any different to me or like have any different kind of texture than the regular Truvia that I buy. But I figure like if I have organic and I got it for free because my mom was kind enough to buy it for me, um, I feel like we should strive to use organic products as often as possible. So until I use all of this up, I'm going to use the organic. So I'm just gonna pop it open, put it right in the bottom there. And now we are good to add our hot water. So we've got our, our sugar and our coffee combined. Then I have some boiling water in here, just came off a boil. And I'm just gonna fill it almost all the way to the top. You don't want it too high because you don't want it to overflow. And also I find if I fill it too high, sometimes I get like coffee grounds in my cup and that is the worst. Like, I mean, I've talked before on my channel about when you accidentally get like matcha chunks in your matcha, but I think like it's actually worse to have like coffee grounds in your cup of coffee. It's just so gross. Here is our coffee and I'm just gonna let it hang out for a while. I don't like to pop the lid back on because I like for it to kind of cool so I can drink it right away. But if you want to, you can just place this guy right over the top and leave the mesh at the top. Like don't press it down quite yet because that's what's going to stop the, um, I always want to say stop the steeping because I mean pretty much that's what you're doing. You're steeping your coffee just like you would a tea. So once you press down the French press, the brewing process will be over and the grounds will have like done all they can do. So we don't want to put this and push it in yet. But if you wanted to, just to keep it a little hotter, you can just place it right on the top like this and leave the top, leave the mesh part out on top. Okay, so I'm gonna let this sit for just a couple of minutes. Not as long as I would for like my teas usually. I like to steep my teas a little too long. Sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't, but I like leaving my teas to steep for quite a while. Coffee, I don't because I don't want it too strong. So I'm gonna just set this to the side for a few minutes. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and finish off the coffee so we can drink it. So if you look closely, you can definitely tell the difference again between like the blonde beans and the regular beans. It's definitely a lighter brown. And it looks like a lot of the coffee grounds kind of float to the top and there's sort of a nice layer of froth at the top, which I wish there was some sort of way to get that into the cup because once we push the mesh down, it really like eliminates all of that, like it doesn't really make it into the cup. But let's go ahead and do that. So just place it on right like that. And then we're just going to push it down. I'm gonna pour it into my cup. And the size is perfect because it makes like a perfect cup. Like 
just a perfect cup of coffee. I love how little this is because, I mean, we live in an apartment and we have a small kitchen, so it doesn't take up too much space like a coffee machine would. I would absolutely love to get an espresso maker at my bridal shower. I did register for one. I don't know if it's gonna happen, but I'm keeping my fingers crossed that I will get it. If not, I'll probably invest in one in, a f in the future because I love espresso so much. I like it a lot better than just like a regular cup of coffee. So I would love one day to have an espresso machine, but for now, like living in our apartment, just a teeny tiny French press is my perfect method for making coffee. It works for me. And delicious cup of coffee. I got my dad a French press for Christmas and he told me the first time he used it that it was like the best cup of coffee he's ever made at home because he's used to the K-cups, which are cool and those are convenient, but for me right now, like I'm loving using a French press. Mm. yeah i love adding the stevia in with the grounds because it really just like like sweetens up the whole cup of coffee like from thing is like perfectly sweet it's not like your sweetener is sunk to the bottom or you have to like stir your coffee like it's just the coffee grounds it just like perfectly dissolves all the sweetener and makes it like sweet and delicious and the blonde roast is just so like mellow and wonderful I always thought it would taste a lot different. I thought there would be a lot of acidity. I thought it would have like weird like citrus notes and stuff, but it really doesn't. It's just like a light, like sweet, wonderful cup of coffee. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this. I got uh, all the tea I drink in a day video um, last month for December, and I made a cup of coffee in it, and I was kind of curious how you guys would react because, like, there's coffee and there's tea, and they're so different, and there's, like, different kinds of people who enjoy different ones, and I just wasn't sure how you guys would react, but you said that you like coffee, so I just thought it would be fun to show you, like, my preferred way to make coffee, and I'd love to hear how you guys make coffee if you make it at home. Or do you in the comments below if you make coffee at home and how you do it. Or if you're one of those people who prefers to order coffee out at a coffee shop, what is your order? I love Americanos. It's just espresso shots and water. So if, it, if I'm in the mood for something hot, usually I'll get that. Usually with just a stevia, maybe something like a, a few pumps of flavored syrup. Um, but then in the summer or when I'm in the mood for something iced, I love espresso and I love cold brew coffee, which is another thing I make at home. So stay tuned for a video on how I do that. You guys are having a beautiful day and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.